Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Hey guys, thanks for coming back. Here we go. We are on the homestead full time and um, it's springtime so we got to get the garden going. Check it out. So what we're going to be doing today is there's an old garden that was here. We're going to take out, we're going to reuse the fencing because everything's so expensive. If you can reuse something, absolutely. We're going to pull all the T-posts because they're in perfect condition. The fencing is actually in pretty decent shape. We're cutting it all apart and we're going to be planting blueberries today. You guys have followed us as we moved out of the city but this is where the homesteading part really begins so you guys remember the, the log cabin that we bought and uh, now it's time to put the garden in and start trying to be somewhat self-sufficient um, try and grow all of our own food uh, stay tuned for chickens stay tuned for uh, pond building stay tuned for all kinds of fun stuff so all right, we're gonna pull this thing apart and uh, then we're gonna transplant some blueberries. Okay. We got all that fencing down, and uh, let's plant the bushes. So we were told, you guys can leave the comment if uh, what you guys know about blueberries, but uh, we have pretty good soil here. There's quite a bit of clay, a little bit down deeper, but this is pretty good topsoil here. But they still suggested that you put peat moss in the bottom of your hole. That way it allowed those, those blueberries to really take, uh, put peat moss in the bottom, and then they use redwood wood chips on the top to keep them uh, nice and weed free. So you guys let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. Why are we using that little trailer instead of putting them in the bed of the ranger? Because the trailer's only a foot off the ground and the bed of the ranger is three feet. And these blueberries are heavy. She's gonna go ask our neighbor if she has a T-post driver we can borrow. See what she brings back. So you guys check out this dirt. The top, it looks like the top Oh, eight inches or so is really awesome, awesome topsoil. And then it gets down to, see how it changes colors? It gets down to a little more of a clay layer. The clay still isn't bad. Um, it's not pure hard clay, but it has been raining too lately. So, but you guys can see the difference in color. 
you know what? I'm going to say that's six inches. Six inches of good topsoil, and then we get to clay. That's the reason for the peat moss, because the roots won't take into clay very well, and you got to give it something else in there to, to, uh, to take to. So I'm going to dig this down. I'm going to dig the clay out. And I'm going to put the peat moss down in there. And I'm going to mix it with some of the soil. This peat moss is super heavy. It's like a hundred pounds a bag. So you can see there isn't, there isn't a whole lot of root ball left. Yeah. Keep digging, Barrett. Free labor right here. Fluff up that dirt. There you go. About a two, about a 30 inch hole. I figure about a foot, solid foot of peat moss below the root ball of the blueberry. That'll give the blueberry plenty of time for new roots to come down and establish themselves and to expand into that nutritious acidic peat moss before they hit that clay layer. So I'm doing a, a foot of peat moss in here. Great for acid loving plants. Natural Canadian sphagnum. Sphagnum, sphagnum, peat moss. Yeah, there you go. What's going on here? Okay, so check out there in the hole. They got a big mole hill, mole, mole hole down in there, and it's a big one. Oh, That's probably a den down there. Not sure how far it goes, but it's, it's almost three feet down. This is an old trick that we used to use out in the fields to kill the moles. Turn on the propane. We're gonna fill the hole full of propane for a second. So that works, two different things are happening there. Hopefully the flames actually burned all the way down into the hole wherever the moles were at and burned them and scalded them. Uh, no, scalding is not the right word. Uh, fried them. Uh, but it's probably more of an asphyxiation kind of thing. So we depleted all the oxygen out of their hole down there. And uh, now we're gonna bury it. But that was very, very effective out in the fields. We'd come out the next morning after doing that and then setting up sprinklers. And we'd have all these charred moles that were dead on top of the ground that they had, they had died and had crawled out to gasp their last breath. So we created a little swale around each one of the bases because this is kind of on a, on a little bit of a hill right here. And that'll help retain any water that comes off the hillside and keep the water in there. My lovely assistant is removing the bindings. And we'll see what happens here. Next thing we gotta do is build a fence around these. And that'll be the last thing to do to plant our blueberries for this year. Our first planting for Hidden Valley Homestead. What are you doing now? I'm gonna build our fence. Try and keep the deer out. guys that's it for the day we've got our blueberry plants planted and we've got a makeshift fence around them and we're gonna come back and uh, reinforce that fence we'll stretch it uh, tight uh, I gotta get some reinforcements for the corners as you can see these were an Oregon variety of blueberry plants that we got uh, from a farm and they're a cold weather plant we put a little swale around them douse them with water and they're budding right now 
So hopefully they'll take. Thanks you guys for watching. If you like our content, give us a thumbs up. Um, leave us a comment and we'll see you in the next video.